Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Tom Kelly. This is Clean Cut Audio. And Two Minute Tuesday is dead, people. I killed it. You cannot teach audio in two minutes, and I'm going to stop pretending like I can. I don't think a single video has ever gone under five or six minutes, but it's not enough time. I don't want to sacrifice accuracy for trying to cut down on time. A lot of people in Facebook groups and forums, they try to make something so simple that it's almost no longer accurate, and I don't want to do that. So we're going to take our times, and we're going to learn properly This week and next week, we're going to be learning about phasing. This week is more about the principles of phasing and how it happens. Next week is going to be phasing in terms of improper room conditioning, acoustical treatment. But we got to learn the basics today. We're going to see three different examples and how this affects your podcast. All right, let's do it. In this video, we're going to learn a couple different ways that phasing can affect your podcast. But first, we need to learn what phasing is. Basically, it is one signal being picked up by two sources or two microphones. And it's picked up slightly out of time because the microphones are at different distances. Think two people in one room recording a podcast. Mic bleed. When you're talking into your microphone, your co host microphone is also picking up that signal. Since it's a little bit further away from you, it picks it up at a slightly different time because it takes longer for your sound wave to travel to the next microphone. When those two signals are summed together and they're slightly out of time, some of the signal overlaps and it causes cancellation of some frequencies, making this really weird boxy kind of sound. It's called phasing. I mean, there is an effect on, you can put on guitars called a phaser, and this is kind of what this is. It kind of gives it this like alien sci-fi effect if it's really, really bad. But the easiest way to learn about phase cancellation, this is how most people start, is with sine waves. Sine wave is a pure tone. We're going to be listening to a one kilohertz sine wave, which is the censored beep. Now, in Pro Tools here, we're going to zoom in really far, and we're going to see that this sine wave is just a perfect up and down. This represents voltage. The middle line here is zero. And we can think of, just to keep it simple, this very top of the compression is 1. The very bottom of the rarefaction is negative 1 with 0 in the middle. So when we listen to this sine wave on its own, we hear... And we're listening to just the top sine wave. When we listen to the bottom sine wave, we hear... The same exact thing. But if we zoom in really, really close to this waveform, we can see that this sine wave here on top is hitting positive one as the bottom one is hitting negative one. And if you sum them together, you add them together, you get zero. So when we play both of these sine waves together, we'll listen to them separately again. Here's the top one. And then here's the bottom one, 180 degrees out of phase of the top one. And together we hear nothing because it is a perfect cancellation of both of these signals now if you don't believe me we can see on this meter here it's playing something right it's playing the same level on both of these waves and if we look at the master meter we see nothing so the sum of this sound and the sum of that sound when it's 180 degrees out of phase is zero now what we can do to put these signals in phase is we can Zoom in really far again. I'm going to hit play. They are playing. So if we start moving them a little bit so they're not perfectly canceling each other out, we hear a little bit of signal, a little bit more because it's canceling each other out less. And eventually, if we get them perfectly, let's see. No, these are perfectly in phase. And when you add them together, we have positive one and positive one. Now we're getting two. So this is about twice as loud when you sum them together in phase and perfectly out of phase. You get zero. It's absolute silence. A lot of people finish the lesson right there. And this is not a good place to to finish it because when you are talking in a podcast, we're not talking in perfect sine waves. I hear sometimes 
people will be like, I hear something in the right ear, but not the left. And since all people know about phase cancellation is like pure canceling, they'll say maybe it's phasing. And that's not how it works. Like in the real world, that's just not how it works. You don't get perfect cancellations unless it is literally the same track duplicated and flip the phase on the other side. But in two people talking in a room, the phasing that happens is not this kind of cancellation. So let's see how this actually works in real life. Here I have tracks from a podcast I was working on last week. It is called On Boards Podcast. If you or anyone you know is interested in being on a board of directors or effectively leading one, I'll put a link in the description of this episode. This is a really good podcast to listen to, but there were some phasing issues this week that luckily they hired an audio engineer who knows how to deal with it. But we're going to ignore the noise in this. They are running this they travel to a studio, they use an Allen and Heath mixing board. It's a pretty decent board, but I typically find that mixers or portable recorders have a higher noise floor than most interfaces do. There's a lot of noise coming from their guest track. She was a very quiet speaker, so they had to boost the gain, and they are unfortunately not super clean preamp, so a bit of noise came up with it. We're going to ignore that for now because I didn't want to take any of it out and affect the sound of the episode. So we're boosting the signal, but no noise reduction, and let's let's listen to just his track alone. Sounds pretty good. But Joe, now recently I have observed that uh, many of the startups, even from days... You okay, so that's how his audio should sound, and we have his mic bleed on the top and bottom tracks here. One speaker was directly across from him, the other was right next to him. And when you play all the tracks together, you're gonna to hear a lot of noise, but also quite a bit of phasing. So listen to how boxy his voice sounds when all the signals are summed together. Now recently, I have observed that uh, many of the startups, even from day zero, incorporate as a benefit score. It kind of have this like wobbly sound in like the higher end of his voice. I'm gonna do quickly before and after, no phasing and phasing, so you can really hear the effects of this. Make sure that the environment you're listening in is quiet so you can really hear what's going on here. Now recently, I have observed that uh, many of the startups, even from day zero, incorporate as a benefits corporation to include in their charter that um, they will take care of um, not only the shareholders, but the stakeholders. So you can kind of hear, I mean, there's a little more room noise that comes in as well, but it's the mic bleed from his from his guests and the co-host across from him that's making that phasing ha the phasing happen in the high end of his voice there. It's some people may not notice. It's, for me, it's kind of hard to imagine a world where someone can listen to that and not notice it, but Let's zoom in. Let's get all these tracks here pretty big. Not you, Master Fader. Keep you down. And we're going to zoom in and see what's really happening here. Let's find a good peak to, to zoom in on. And again, this is not a sine wave. It's much more complicated with all of these, the spikes and compressions and rarefactions. And also, it's more complicated when a sine wave is just a tone in a vacuum. But a human voice, it relies on reflections from the walls and it changes the sound. It changes for each microphone. So it changes it enough that there's not a pure cancellation. But if I was to actually, let's say, double this track down here and put a plug-in that would perfectly flip the phase. Let's see, EQ, single band, flip the phase 180 degrees. Let's hear how this sounds. But Joe, now recently I have observed that uh, many of the startups even... So even that's not perfectly flipped for whatever reason. There's lots of other stuff probably going on in the plugins, and as it's routed through the... The program here it's not going to be a perfect cancellation so that's just not going to happen in the real world that's uh technically a theoretical thing it's not going to happen in your podcast where you get perfect cancellation but we're going to zoom in and we can see here that if we're looking at this spike on the mic bleed this spike happens over here which is two thousandths of a second later than on the original track and below it's kind of hard to tell below it's happening just a time what is that 
less than a thousandth of a second later. But that tiny time difference is what's causing this phasing issue. So one thing we can do and one thing you should be doing, delete that mic bleed. Just get rid of it. It does two things. It reduces your noise significantly because rather than having three tracks of preamp noise and three tracks of environmental noise, now you just have one. So already cut it down by 66% or whatever. But also you're getting rid of that phasing and it's hyper-focused on just that one person's voice. Now this is fine until we get a little bit of crosstalk. So say that the two people start talking over each other. We can't delete just one of them because then you're just going to hear the mic bleed. It's kind of a weird situation. You're going to hear both. So what we should do before we cut the mic bleed is try to manually align the phase in these tracks. So I'm going to zoom in really far and we're going to be working off of this one's easy to see this section right here. And we're going to look at this big positive number here and we can see it's happening over here. So I'm going to slide this track over and do my best to align this visually. There's possibly a better way to do it than visually. If you know, leave a message in the comments. I would love to know how to do this better than visually, but it seems like, let's see. It's hard to see how much is moving when you're this zoomed in. This is about center and center. And now this one over here has to move over as well. So now all three of these are pretty well aligned to the centers. Is this, let's see. Hmm, I think it's probably better over here. So now that these are kind of phase aligned, let's listen to the difference. And I'll edit in a before and after. Now recently I have observed that uh, many of the startups even, but now recently I have observed that uh, many of the startups even, all right, so we don't have that phasing issue anymore. So now that we're pretty confident, it's going to maintain that level of being in phase with all the tracks with each other. Now we can start deleting so that if there is any crosstalk at any point where you have to leave both tracks in, those moments of crosstalk don't have phasing in them. And now we have afterwards. But Joe, now recently I have observed that uh, many of the startups even. Which is much, much better than where we were just a moment ago with this. But Joe, now recently I have observed that uh, many of the startups even. So now that we know what phasing is, how it affects your podcast and how to properly mitigate all of that phasing. There's a video I did a while ago, which is about cutting mic bleed using strip silence. And why this is beneficial is because this episode is 50 minutes long. And a lot of the arguments I see for cutting track silence is because you have to go in and manually cut all of this stuff and it can take forever we don't want to be doing that so slowly but it does need to be done there's a faster way of doing it called strip silence it is in pro tools i believe it's in logic pro and adobe audition has its own version either way we don't want to be doing this manually by hand. There's a faster way. Check out the card in this video. Check out the link in the description for how to do this quickly using strip silence. This episode, when I did it the other day, it's about 40 minutes long. And with strip silence, I spent maybe four minutes really getting all of the silence cut here so that it got rid of the phasing and it really focused the signal on just the person who's speaking. But... This goes with everything, whether there's phasing issues or not. If you have more than one speaker in one room, you need to be cutting the mic bleed on the other channel. Because again, it cuts the noise significantly and it cuts any issues that could possibly happen with phasing. It reduces the room noise because it's not getting extra noise. I mean, you should just be cutting the signal. So only one channel is playing for one person that is talking as it is right here. Right? So check out the strip silence video.
Thank you for watching this video on phasing. It's a huge issue that a lot of people don't know exists. Next week, we're going to be talking about how this can also happen with one person, one microphone in one untreated room. Because what happens then is if I didn't have these foam panels on the wall, my voice would be bouncing off the walls and it would be coming back into this microphone slightly later. So we can also have phasing from one voice, one mic in one room because the room is not treated to deal with the reflections and we're getting essentially this mic bleed thing from one channel. That's one way to think about it. So we're gonna be dealing with that next week and I'm really excited about it. I know I've talked about it before, but I have a podcast now and it is cleverly called clean cut audio. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast to hear more listening exercises and just learn how to get better at podcasting. There's a lot of like philosophies of audio, the values of audio, listening exercises and demoing effects side by side. So you can hear the difference. It's going to be slightly different information than it is what, than what I'm presenting here, but it's all going to be supplemental and work very well together. You can subscribe at cleancutaudio.com slash podcast. And that launches January 30th, which is in like three days. I'm super excited about it. And if you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like me to do in the future, please reach out hello at cleancutaudio.com with any questions you can recommend a video topic in there or in the comments of this video. I'd love to help you out in whatever issues you have in your podcast. It's pretty easy to kind of pick away at the low hanging fruit. Like we don't need to do really advanced audio stuff in order to make your signal sound better. I know we're not like as a friend Gilbert put it, we're not remastering the Beatles again. Like we are just trying to capture good audio. So we don't need to learn. We don't need to talk about these really advanced things. The low hanging fruit is just, you know, cutting out silence. Like that alone is super valuable information. And there's a lot of people that don't know to do it. So while we're not talking about advanced, you know, dynamic EQ stuff, this is the low hanging fruit. It is the easiest way to get a much better sound. So we're going to be doing that on and on until there's nothing else to learn, which will never happen. So I will do this channel forever. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and please ring that bell. So you never miss a video. I'm going to continue putting these out on Tuesdays, but I'm not even going to try to limit the time. It's just, you know, get to the point as fast as possible and don't really give too much extra, but I'm not trying to cut it short for the sake of fitting into the theme of two minute Tuesday. It's not going to happen. So, so I'm still going to be here. It's just going to be slightly different, a little more in depth, which is what I'm looking forward to. I will see you all next week. Thanks everybody. Bye.